events or identify those key aging strategies or aging of various milestones. That is, and if we start investing before the company reaches that level, we can see that our wealth will rise exponentially after each that. We all know VIP what level was it a couple of years back and right now what it is. Like we have got examples of companies like an Infosys, which have even returns which are in the prime modeling, we cannot even count the amount of the number of times the returns are multiplied. So trying to do some research on the company, trying to identify those events, and if we are able to identify those, I think uh, we can make significant amount of gains. So the, the scripts which you mentioned and the people who are owning the scripts have probably identified it much better than others. And that's why they are holding large proportion of equity in that company. So I think it's, it's uh, important to do that. But for that, obviously, we need to know the company and several more things about the company. You said that there are economic conditions and political conditions and actual conditions affected the market very well. Then why does this happen? Why the political conditions or natural conditions affect the economy of the country? Why can't you prevent them from being affected? Yes. When it comes to the budget, anything like that happens, is it the price of markets go up or come down? Why does this happen? See, basically, it comes on the political events, if I have to say, without referring to what has happened in the recent past. Uh, normally, politics or government is the one which is the driving force behind the growth of the economy. Uh, the government invests in infrastructure, the government makes various concessions, frames various policies to increase consumption. So, if the government is the one which is responsible for a large part of the economic growth, and obviously the policies of the government are very very important to the growth of the economy. And the stock market follows what the economy does. If the economy is doing well, stock markets will go up. If the economy is not doing well, the stock market will go up. So that's why political uh, issues are very important. If the decision making of the government is pretty slow, if the stock or the wrong decisions which are being made, then obviously the market doesn't take it very high. So whatever has happened in the recent past, there have been some concerns about the pace of the decision making and things like that, because of which the markets have not taken it very lightly. In terms of the international events or some of the natural events, natural calamities, obviously it is beyond our control. So we cannot do much about preventing them or making them happen. And whatever happened in Japan is obviously beyond anybody's imagination and control. But what that natural calamity could do is it can significantly alter the demand supply situation globally. And if we are being a part of the globe, obviously we also will be impacted either positively or negatively. So the natural events, if they are major in nature, and more importantly, if and uh, home closer, closer home, the political uh, developments do play a very important part in terms of how the markets perform. But the investors should know about the certain conditions of the online conditions and they can set up their mind basically automatically. And whatever the strategies are government, we are going to be out of all that strategies and we are going to make the market grow up only. So why can't they do that? Why can't the economy can do that things in the market? No, government and RBI obviously are focused on government. So there are certain events which are beyond their control also. Like as I said, the natural event which has happened. Like what is happening, EPI has increased the growth rate by about 30% in the last few weeks. Now, India is a net importer of crude oil. We import about 75% of our crude oil Right? So, if the crude price internationally has to go up, then obviously it is going to impact it. So, that is something which is beyond control. Now, on, on its part, what we see in the recent budget, what the finance minister has tried to do, is that he has to move very aggressively on reforms. Right, he has tried to attack the inflation which has come out in the last six months. We all know that we are all impacted significantly by inflation. And the inflation is much higher than what the headline numbers suggest. So it has tried to attack the inflation. It has tried to bring in more reforms. And it is trying to do whatever it can for the economic growth of the country. Like India at 9% next year it will be the second fastest growing economy in the world. So it's not that the government is not doing anything. It is doing its things right. But the market has its own way of functioning, they have own ways of looking at things. And depending on the timing, the markets move up and down. And once again, at the cost of reputation, there are some things which are even beyond the control of the RBI and government. So it can go very well. 
So we take to need uh, take into account all these factors before actually making an investment decision. Now suffice it to say that the government is working on reform, it is working on growth rates, and we see it as a very process. Okay. Who is the next person to speak? On the line, which is not going to take it away from the subject. As you said, there are certain factors which are just beyond control. I would like to have you share a little bit on the thought that as regulators, you know what impacts they have put in to share a few words, the efforts that they have put in to get things streamlined, to build up the confidence of the investors. I think that will bring interest to arm army, as you said, the common man, a little bit more closer to the market. So I'm sure I'll put a lot of effort and a little bit of faith also on the efforts of the investors. Just to give you a little bit of interest, cities are regulated for the markets and the most efficient regulator across the group, I think, they have done a fantastic job in terms of regulation because if you take a look at uh, the 20 years back, the 20 years back, back uh, the, the brothers are supposed to have non-transparent rates. And that's what is to happen in the marketplace. And I think uh, after the Ketan Pari issue and the Chukari force, I think uh, there's a sea change happening in the same way. We have a multifunctional uh, job to do. What we're trying to do now is that they are regulating the uh, intermediary cycles, which, uh, which are pushing us to do more transparent things and make us really highly compliant. That's one. Second important thing is that we must education and make a dedication huge step back towards educating investors and giving a confidence to investors that uh, this uh, Indian markets are very safe and sound. Because the strong believe that it's a hard money but you put money and you can't have peace or you can beat the processes or the systems and uh, take the customer's money off. In that sense, I think uh, regulator does an extremely good job in terms of uh, regulating. The third important thing about uh, space right now is to get uh, open up the economy in terms of the regulation. So that uh, have people just not in this industry in their story. They also want more money coming to markets and so that the markets can grow. Uh, if you look at uh, 15 years back, I find it interesting that there was so minimal participation. Uh, the participation rate was really on. And we also work on technologies, we work with the exchanges to make sure that all the brokers are compliant. They push us to produce uh, one of the best technologies. I think they have a multiple task. I think the last 10 to 12 years, they have an extremely good job as a regulator. In terms of putting regulation in place for the brokers as well as in terms of keeping the customers in the sale. For example, there is a, a very clear current customer payment set so that any customer client has a problem with the broker and a particular trade can uh, try to say me. And as a market participant, there is a time actually specified that within 30 days I need to respond to the customer and it is monitored on daily basis. Second important thing is that. Before choosing a broker, we have to do a lot of work, right? So today I, I come from a company. Okay. This book doesn't say that you have to choose a broker. And you, uh, just for example, you go to a service site and look at what are the customer documents. Uh, there it is the broker. It's very important. It's very, very important at how transparent uh, the broker deals with the client. He being in the largest stock broker in the company. And uh, just to give you an example, he process almost 4 lakh credits a day. Uh, that's uh, bigger than a, a large broker in uh, all street. Uh, big of all that place. Uh, but the value of the place was smaller because we didn't the market was still growing. Rather than we had to some uh, participation. But we have a capability of managing all that place. And this man, we have almost 9 and a half 10 lakh customers. They trade almost every day in our system. So if you don't look at how the data is processed is there. Look at the case right. So we open the clients. These are the customer companies that have so much of growth. You, you find our name also, but you find us at the seventh whole group. Uh, because when you manage customers, there will be some customer companies. But as an organization, we also are very highly compliant. Very highly compliant, highly transparent organization. And we are a uh, professional corporate body. Because we are subsidiary of the bank, also. the bank is the holding company. So to ask, answer your question, I think the city plays a very important role in expanding markets, 
educating my own writing and what a better day safe guarding the clients in this so we've got the time for just a couple of uh, questions of our first question of my question so we've got a few gentlemen here and then we'll go with the last question from Ali ಸಂಧಿ <laughs> most important thing about it is that as long as you are in the right stuff in the right sectors you will make money that the simple fundamental is that what is the price which is shown in the market for example is just next price why does that is just bank next price why does the price movement happens there is logic again for example if corporate or a bank like the usual bank or any corporate or a sector grows by 10 to 20% that will obviously reflect in that stock price So it's very important is that what stocks you buy, what sectors do you buy. As long as you get your stock mix right, and if the economy grows, we is going to be at end of nine percent, we have positive returns. And the other is asset class. For example, you also need to look at what is risk reward ratio. For example, for example, if you are looking at an FD, where the interest rate scenario is nice, so the net at end of nine percent in FD, what kind of net do you have now percent today? we don't know which to pay what kind of risk it is we have seen that when the interest rate scenario is peak then it can be we find net instrument giving better returns and uh, markets usually are lower at one time but this is the most of the people don't know it's better the market the markets are low so a lot of money moves from a to b to that that time and in that's an opportunity to do uh big invest so what so then that straight answer for that that we don't have short terms but if you are doing a good stock picking fundamental right stocks you are you will make money you will make positive returns and what we have seen over the past several years is that uh, uh, during a period of time not maybe 6 months or 3 months but over a slightly longer period of time it is a given as a asset class is one of the best returns across all asset classes all right so you might have a bank of the earning 8% and uh, it is the uh, average return has been about 15% or so per annum hope that returns are even better if you hold on for more than one year the tax benefits in terms of shares and it is much higher as compared to nft so post tax returns in terms of equity is much better at any one time during a specified period of time but yes for obvious for that uh, as hopefully you need to make the right decisions uh, follow some uh, uh, follow on approach and then invest rather than just uh, uh, going by the asset and going on tips so as an asset class equity is always highest return but for every high return you also have attendant risk you cannot have high returns and low risk so risks are also higher but if you take adequate amount of uh, safeguards and do proper research then you can obviously make much better money in terms of equity as compared to equity Uh, the fight for unrest which is going on in the Middle East. Do you think it is fight for freedom or democracy, or is it fight for getting control of groups? Because uh, so because it is funded by USA and USA wants to be the big daddy and wants to get control of the entire world. So don't you see group going through an unfair battle and uh, and be facing inflation as a concern in a really bad situation? And the second question is sir. should be be invested in the telecom sector i want to put a point on that that the, the current scenario with the current scams going on the average revenue falling and the few more prices should be invested in telecom sector or can we shift to banking sector with the adding of the picture everybody will be having a bank account so what you want to do is taking the second question first uh, we are not very positive in telecom Uh, I would rather recommend switching to banking. So that's uh, very briefly. And there are in basic banks, there are large banks which will obviously do obvious beneficiaries of the overall economic growth. So you should be looking at the large banks in the private sector, the uh, private sector banks as we say, rather than the PSU, public sector banks. But yes, sectorally we do prefer banking over telecom. 
So uh, the search can definitely be seen that's what we do find. As far as the first question is concerned, we are no experts at uh, finding out whether the US is complete or whether the, it's a fight for democracy. Uh, looking at the kind of uh, reports which are happening right now across countries and the news which are coming in as to the state of people which is there right now in those countries, we think this was long overdue. It was boiling up for several years and just one person being held has popped up this. So there was some reason which was needed to uh, for this boiling water pressure cooker to open up and that has actually happened. If you look at the plight uh, of the people here or the levels at which the economies are, how badly they are doing, we think that the people were really oppressed. People did not have really opportunities there. So to that extent what we believe is that risk rewards are for more freedom, for more democracy. And beyond that, I think US funding all of these and it's, we are no experts at doing that and we don't have any need. But if this has to boil over to maybe big countries like a Saudi Arabia, we can have circumstances where food press can go up to non country and so on. And if that doesn't happen, then let me give you one more perspective. Saudi Arabia and the oil countries as a bloc, they themselves do not want the crude price to remain high for a sustainable period of time. Because if that has to happen, there can be a structural shift in demand. And that is what they want to guard against. There are alternate fuels which are coming up in a big way. Gas is there, shale gas is something which the US is banking on hugely. So if they are concerned, the OPEC countries or maybe the oil producing countries are very much concerned that if oil prices be, uh, remain sustainably high over a period of time, the demand, that will be a structural shift in demand away from crude. And that is what they don't want. So, to give a short answer, uh, we think yes, it's a fight for democracy. We are not able to throw any light on whether the US is funding it or whether they have any anterior motives. But if the crude has to remain sustainably high at 150 and beyond, it will be very negative for India if it is not happening. That's basically how it ends. If you have a compulsion for staying in telecom, are these the stock which I would recommend you stay in because that's the company which is going overseas and doing several good things. But beyond that, companies which are focused in the domestic market, as I say, the competition is so intense. I think and the, 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 the avenues to grow at a very fast pace that to have a profitable growth are very few. So maybe if you have to stay part, it is the only option. But uh, I think banking accounting goes in the better side. Can you address the derivatives? Derivatives, yes, it's one more uh, method of investing or one more method of playing in the stock market, not investing. Uh, derivatives is basically uh, an instrument by which you can take an exposure, uh, a higher exposure than, than the cash market. And uh, it's also a method of hedging your bets. So there are two reasons why people do trade in derivatives. One is that they only have to pay the margin money, so to that extent they can take a bigger position with the same amount of money. That uh, uh, in fact acts to the negative some point of time because people generally tend to trade beyond their means. So it is very advisable, you can do trade, you can trade in derivatives, but then you should not go beyond your means. So that is first thing. The second thing is people do uh, take derivative positions to hedge their positions in the cash market. And it is a very, very good hedging tool where you can do away with the market risk and uh, uh, basically play only on the company risk which is there. So I think it's a good, uh, good strategy to trade in derivatives, but within our means, and we should not open it. And that will definitely help us in reducing our market risk to a significant extent because that can be used as an effective engine too. In my view is that I think uh, if you start in the first time in equities, I think it's always advisable to do not to do a derivative screen. Because it comes with a huge risk. It's a limited risk. For example, you buy the stock at 100 rupees, you just have to pay a few more 10 rupees. You can buy uh, uh, 10 to 100, yes. uh, people just get maybe uh, maybe to create a small amount of cash back in the full amount. I think it takes a huge little trade and tax. A lot of people in the markets uh, really invest in money on derivative trades right. because this is the knowledge of derivatives is very limited to brokers. I don't think any uh, investor understands the risk of derivatives. 
in our organization, what we try to do is that uh, we also look at pH category. When I started uh, speaking about the stocks, this is a really invested company about 50 to 55 years. We have to put money on uh, derivative trades. We have to do development to do it. And we have a uh, two process in place that every proposal comes to me to sign. We look at the background of the industry, we have said, which experience the market. Then only we actually sign off and allow them to do the trade because I think the debate is a look at the whole merit of the one of the tool of destruction was the And let me tell you that. And uh, I've seen all these complex structures in my career. I think I advise if you are a uh, first investor in the markets, please don't get into debates. I think it can be a school of destruction of the It's a double edged sword. Yeah, Nifty, I think the only method of investing is uh, through education. Because then I think it's better in which you can do it. So, if you want to invest in a Nifty, yes, that's the only way of investing in a Nifty. But what our uh, uh, advice would be is that rather than betting on Nifty, as well, you may try to. Either pay the market if you want to pay the market as well, you can either pay through mutual funds, which is a much safer way of uh, investing. Or else you take bets on some large companies which are very well reputed. And so that the risk which you face, even in a market meltdown, is significantly lower. Those companies, the prices of those companies will fall much lower and the Nifty might fall much faster. So I think it's always better to place the market either the mutual fund if you are a first time investor. Or invest in some large companies that are very good management companies. So that yeah, you can have a good next thing. We can also look at the uh, index funds. There are index funds. Here yeah. you speak that Nifty has a index for up to the ground is good as an index fund. What is the number of money in index funds? So yeah, Nifty Bees is an index fund. It is an index fund. Or you can start money. Okay, very shortly, we've got uh, two questions to be accommodated. One of the gentlemen who has never spoken about it. We'll take one question here. We'll take one question. Very shortly. Uh, good evening, Guru Mahar. Uh, Guru Mahar, uh, Nifty Bees is a company which is actually over a day, three and three, three and eighty, and over a day, eighty. That is eighty two thousand seven hundred. Today five thousand four hundred, six thousand five hundred. Nifty is what? Then we buy the other three seventy five hundred. If you invest that money, what will happen? So, I think you did not hear my answer properly. As I said, the first question was: there is compulsion of investing in telecom. If you want to remain in telecom, because the gentleman asked me a second time about telecom, so I understood that he likes the telecom sector and wants to remain invested in that. So, if you have to the telecom sector, you have to invest in the telecom sector, you have to invest in the best way. But my last statement was, banking is always preferred over telecom. So, banking is better than RT. So, that was the advice which I gave, and I completely agree with RT over the last one or two years has underperformed. But at the same time, we do not have to penalize the company and we need to look at holistically. Look at the time from when Bharti has started off and the kind of return it has given. So it's nothing, to, nothing against Bharti, which basically is a sector which has become more competitive and the fundamentals that way because of that have deteriorated. So if, if the sector has to be bought into, it has to be bought into Bharti. But obviously banking is much more preferred as compared to tax compared. Yes, I would like to ask you why stop loss and uh, how do you play with the stop loss and uh, how do you come uh, to a stop loss? Stop loss is basically the price at which you should square off your trade. That is the the definition of a stop loss. If you have bought something at 100 rupees, your target is that the stock price will be 120. But you are not very sure about the markets because markets have the have a history of fluctuating and they can always go down even if you are expecting it to go up. And if the market moves against you or if the stock price is against your expectation, 
So that's the method of limiting your loss. At the same time, if the stop loss is, we can always make the money which you want to desire, which you desire to make. But stop loss is basically very important in when you do trading. When you are looking at short term bets, the markets in the short term can move either way because it's very violent and very fluctuating. So in the market moves beyond uh, in a direction which is different from what you are thinking, you can at least restrict your loss to a particular amount which you can make. If you don't do any stock loss, then 100 rupees stock goes to 50. You lose 50 percent of investments. So that's why people do the stock loss, but this is basically a thing which is associated with short term trade, not with a longer term trade. See, basically when you do fundamental investing, you always know slightly more better about the company. And you have a fixed target of maybe the 4,000 or 3,800 or whatever it is, based on your assumptions and your understanding as to how the company will perform over a year period. Now, in the intermediate term, there can be fluctuations in the markets. Like, uh, suppose an unforeseen event happens, which impacts the market and the stock price goes down. But until and unless the fundamentals of the company have not changed, you should not sell the company even at a lower price. Because it's market, it's not that the stock price cannot go down in the intermediate term. But if you have done your research well, and if the fundamentals of the company have not changed, you can be very much sure that your target price of 3,800 or 4,000 will be achieved. So if you have invested with a long amount of you, which normally fundamental research is associated with, we would rather prefer not to put a stop loss. But at the same time, if the fundamentals change, something has happened which will change the fundamentals of the company, you should even sell out the company at 2,000. You should not wait for now. Because what you are expected is not going to happen now. So that is the answer, but otherwise stop loss is not required from the middle. I'm sure we've got a lot more questions that we probably answer and respond to over the constraints of time. So as maybe we could comment and take it more than uh, do for the statement. And uh, we'd like to acknowledge once again, very specially, can we put your hands together for the gentleman on the table, Mr. Vijay Shah and Mr. D. Kumar. And we'd like to say a very token of appreciation from CNBC TV and Network AK, the publishers. Everything you want to about stock market investing. We would like to thank the publishers, CBC, JV, AT, and Network AT, team for the launch as well as the uh, event to be celebrated this evening here at Cross. A special mention and a special thank you to Motor Securities for making this event possible. And finally, bought a copy this evening. If in case you make a purchase of a copy, Everything you want to know about stock market investing, don't forget you are entitled to a coupon which brings forth an opportunity to open a DMAT account free of cost. So those of you who are doing this opening an account, don't miss out on this opportunity. Copies are available at the counter. Thank you because without each one of you this evening, it would not have been such a grand launch. So thank you and this is an extension to each one of your customers, members and guests get a password. And we look forward to you joining us back again when we come back with another event on Crossword. Thank you.